car, in, two cars in front of us, um, broke hard, we're gonna get a message and a warning that's gonna give you some type of indication to take some type of action to avoid an imminent threat. And three, two, one. So what you'll see on the screen, you'll see um, it's gray right now. It's gonna to turn to green. We have to reach a certain speed. Once we reach that certain speed, it'll turn to green that we've detected the other vehicles. And then it'll go yellow that there's a possible threat and red that there's an imminent threat. Did you break? Yes. Are you good? The driver has full control. Okay. Now the next scenario we're gonna show is a scenario that actually happened to me driving on Telegraph. Um, the black car is going to represent a car that's broken down. Imagine if that car is broken down on Telegraph and you don't, you can't see that car because your vision's blocked by this blue car. At the last minute, the blue car swerves out of the way and you need to take some type of action to avoid that crash. You'll get a warning from that. You'll get a warning in enough time to take some type of action prior to seeing the actual vehicle. And three, two, one. It's green. And you can see the colors go pretty quick. And the last color it was red? Yes. Yeah. Um, are you guys familiar with Blind Spot? Okay. We're going to show you Blind Spot using 100% B2B technology. There are no radars on this vehicle. And when, when we show you blind spot, we're going to show you um, two scenarios at the same time. We're going to show you blind spot in addition to lane change warning. What lane change warning is, um, imagine if you're in a lane and you're getting ready to change lanes to the right lane. You do not see that motorcycle in that right lane coming up beside you at a high rate of speed. You put your blinker on, try to, try to change lanes, and you will, see a, you will receive a warning because some of the information that's communicating is the vehicle speed of the other vehicle and you can predict that that vehicle is coming up on you too quick and not to get in that lane. And three, two, one. So what you'll see on the screen, you'll see this box right here behind right be green. And when someone's in our blind spot zone, this will be yellow. And when Bob puts his blinker on, it'll be um, red. He's in our blind spot, it's yellow, as well as the warning in the um, outside mirror. Our next scenario, our next scenario is called do not pass. Imagine if you will, you're traveling on a country road and you're behind a tractor. You've been behind that tractor a really long time and you want to get around that tractor. Mm -hmm. Put your blinker on, proceed into the other lane and you don't see the other vehicle coming in the opposite direction. With this technology, you will get a warning that a vehicle is coming in your opposite direction. We won't cross lanes, we'll just put our blinker on. And three, two, one. And the range of this technology is 300 meters. So what you have is you have a, a bubble around your vehicle. Like I was saying earlier, it's transmitting 360 degrees, 300 meters around your vehicle, which is a lot different than um, typical um, forward collision warning systems, which it's just like a 13 meter. Our last scenario is probably the last, most compelling. Imagine, if you will, you're coming up to an intersection and your view is blocked by some type of reason. We happen to have a huge semi-truck blocking our view. You have the green light and you're getting ready to proceed up into the intersection and you cannot see the other vehicle coming crosswise. The other vehicle will violate that red light for some reason. Not paying attention, we're not sure. The other vehicle violates that red light. With this technology, you'll receive this warning. And three, two, one. Ooh, that's, that's impressive. That's a dramatic one. <laughs> um, <laughs> it looked really good. That was worth the price of the car. Um, so that's 2002. Um, but we, we'd have to confirm. Mike Schulman is the camp technical expert. I work on the policy side for B2B communication. Um, and there's also on the policy side, the similar type of OEMs. There's eight, OEM, eight OEMs working together to solve and to work with the USDOT on the policy 
CNOs. Because it's not just the, the industry working together. We need to work with the government. We need to work with FCC mm -hmm. on the frequency. And we also need to work with the USDOT, NHTSA, with RITA. Everyone has, it's a big collaboration because this is, yeah. you know, if you don't have the collaboration, then, you know, this project probably wouldn't be as successful as, as it's been so far. Are there any uh, key suppliers that are... Uh you can talk about that are like you know dri driving this um the suppliers are definitely involved um i don't you don't know yeah how I'd far say, away from reality are we with this sort of thing well all of this is being done to support the NHTSA regulatory potential regulatory decision in 2013. so after what happened is through camp um, and there's what's called the safety pilot and the safety pilot is consists of driver clinics, which are um, six different areas around the United States. There's going to be test sites for drivers to actually experience these vehicles. And then after that, there's going to be a model deployment in 2012. The model deployment in 2012, the, the USDOT will pick one major city across in the whole United States to do a whole huge model deployment. That'll NHTSA consist, will pick that, you said? Um, USDOT Sorry. will. Oh, okay. Um, it'll consist of one major city somewhere in the United States, and that's where the model deployment and that's where we'll prove out the technology and the intersections will have vehicles, they'll have aftermarket safety devices, here I am devices and the like. So it's all building up to this big model deployment to support the 2013 decision date. Excellent. But the, the six test sites are underway now or you're getting ready for that? Um, it's MIS is the first one and that's coming up uh, very shortly and you can go to the um, USDOT's website and pull all that information down, all the different test sites and where it's at. And this is for which regulation?